Our next awardee uh, award is for our Servium alumni. We established this award in 1990, and it honors a graduate who embodies the Servium volunteer spirit of Ursuline Academy. This person, Mickey, is recognized for her commitment, her involvement, her achievements, and her service over the last five years. Mickey has used her really unique talents in the theater arts to make a difference, to help uh, us understand better diversity and be more accepting. And in this video that you'll see here, you'll realize that her passion lies in um, adoption, and especially in Romania, where she adopted her daughter and all of the work that she's done around that to try to open that back up for the world. I'll turn your attention to the video now. Mickey Bone Melsheimer, Ursuline Academy class of 1979, received her Bachelor of Arts degree in theater with a minor in management from Texas A&M University, studied at the Royal National Theater of Great Britain, and most recently received her master's degree in humanities at the University of Texas in Dallas in 2014. She and her husband, Tom, have three children, Jack, Jeff, and Anne-Marie. Mickey has worked in professional and educational theater for more than 30 years, including eight years at Ursuline Academy. She is currently the managing director of the Contemporary Theater of Dallas. As successful as she is in the theater realm, education and adoption causes are her greatest passions. In 2000, Mickey was invited to join Hope Cottage on a volunteer work trip to Romania. It was there that she saw the grim conditions in orphanages and decided to dedicate her life to improving the plight of Romanian children. Soon after her return to the States, Mickey and Tom received word of a baby girl in need of a family. In 2001, just two weeks before the Romanian government closed international adoption, Catherine Anne Marie Melsheimer joined her new family in Dallas. Knowing how many other children need help, Mickey and her family have supported the efforts of Hearts Across Romania, an organization in Texas that works closely with Romanian organizations like Catharsis Association of Brasov by raising money, hosting Romanian visitors, and even traveling to Romania in 2010 to volunteer at five different orphanages. In 2015, Mickey was asked to address the Romanian Senate Committee on adoption issues, hopeful her story would persuade them to reopen international adoption. She was so passionate. She's one of those teachers that teaches because she wanted to teach, not because she had to teach. And she was so interested in getting to know each one of us as an individual, opposed to just her students in her class. So she took time to really get to know us. The thing that really turned the corner, I think, for the students in the class and for what Ursuline could bring to other students outside of our walls was the third year. It was a acting styles and a, a production class that was already in place, but with her special tweak on it, that class turned into a Servium touring class. I got to admire Mickey for how she used the arts to show us service. She found a way for us to learn so many skills and life lessons, but also apply it to helping others through Servium. We really learned active listening. We really learned empathy. We really learned how stories heal people, how people connect with stories and then identify better with themselves. And so it was such a wonderful experience for all of us. We learned things about acting and about ourselves and about working together. At the same time, we were bringing joy to children that weren't being able to get that in their schools. It was done with such a generous heart and it was all Mickey's idea to make that happen. One thing that Mickey really taught me that I really draw on in my career is she has complete disregard for complacency. I would say that she's daring. Uh, she's not afraid of trying new things. She's not afraid of putting herself out there, whether it be writing a play, uh, about uh, Orthodox Jews, whether it be putting together a touring show with a bunch of high school girls to travel around Dallas. Um, she is not intimidated by that sort of thing. So Mickey can command these large audiences. She has showmanship, she can get everyone's attention. But what I really admire about her service is she really takes it one person at a time. She'll call a student who's struggling at home. She'll be available to a family that wants her mentorship. She was with our fellow theater teacher when she was taking her last breath. There's really, her life is so big that there's no act too small for someone else. 
I think Mickey completely embodies Sir Vian. I mean, she is somebody who is constantly thinking about other people. That is the kind of person she is. She uses her talents and her gifts to help other people. Before we brought Anne Marie home from Romania, the year before that, she went over to Romania and worked uh, for about a week in a variety of orphanages, bringing clothes, shoes, uh, working those orphanages, uh, meeting the people that were taking care of the kids, meeting the kids themselves. Uh, she's been very devoted to that sort of thing. You know, at Ursuline, we all kind of called her our, our mom. You know, she was our mom at school, and she just cares so deeply. And, you know, I was a student when she went to Romania to get Anne Marie, and I just remember being so impressed with that whole story and just what she did. While we were students at Ursuline, Mickey was very open about how diverse and special her family was growing it through adoption. And we knew that the door was always open to really talk to her about anything, which really came in handy when my husband and I were considering adoption for our family. And one of the first things I learned about adoption or anything kind of outside of the pack is to go to a well where there's water. And Mickey was really our family's well. Congratulations, Mom, on receiving such a prestigious award. I'm sorry I couldn't be there for you, but I'm very proud of you, and no one is more deserving. Congrats. Hey, Mom. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to say I'm sorry I couldn't make it down there for the ceremony. Uh, congratulations on the Serviam Award. I love you, and I'm very proud of you. Congratulations, Mom. I am very proud of you. I'm so glad we got to both receive an Ursuline education, and thank you for teaching me what Serviam really means. I love you, and I'm really proud of you. Congratulations. Baby, I'm so appreciative that uh, you got this. You are so remarkably deserving. Uh, you are someone that thinks you don't deserve things like this, but you deserve this. Uh, I'm very, very impressed that you got it, and you are truly a role model for Ursuline graduates everywhere. Ursuline Academy's 2016 Serviam alumna, Mickey Bone Melsheimer. Wow. Normally I like putting people on stage, not being on stage myself. But here it goes. <clears throat> First of all, I would like to say thank you to Gretchen, Andy, the alumni board, the alumni office, Claire, Aubrey, my family back there in the corner, my classmates of 1979, <laughs> my teachers, my lovely teachers, my sisters, my friends, and that Lily Watson Neubauer, um, my village. I wanted to thank you for the opportunity of allowing me to say thank you. When I sat down to compose something, this is what came out. It's called, It Takes a Village. At the tender age of seven, I learned it takes a village. That great year of loss, 1968, for our nation, it was too vibrant, young leaders. For my family, it was one vibrant, young father. Shockwave of losses like those are enduring. The ripple effect lasts a lifetime. It reminds us that we are, in fact, only human. But it is there, right there, amid the chaos that comes with human loss that I learned about humanity, that it takes a village. 
family, friends, neighbors, complete strangers who taught this child that their time was the greatest gift a person could give to help a widowed mother carry the load of her double duty. That village taught me about being present for others by their example, by simply showing up and pitching in. They manifested time in their busy lives because they stopped to think with their heart. That village showed me about volunteering time and that time requires dedication and commitment to action, things much harder to give than money. But don't get me wrong, money's okay too. So. <laughs> it's that village I would like to thank and some of those villagers are right here in this room and I know others are looking down from us in heaven. The rest of you, like me, we stand on their shoulders, and that makes you part of the village. Thank God for this village, the teachers, the educators, the coaches, the mentors who teach more than just the mind. It's that teacher who sits with you on the playground, on days you just don't feel like playing, are those friends who pick you up and they dust you off and they whisper in your ear, keep going, you can do it. Keep going, you can do it. These villagers, these earth angels, mind the gaps of human need. They're the support system that takes you under its wing and they coach you as you take flight. Over the real years, I realized by your example, that what really matters is feeling safe, feeling loved, and feeling supported. I learned that right here in this village. Yes, it takes a village to instill hope, to encourage, to educate, to inspire, to ignite dreams. For it is our dreams that make us who we are and it is our collective dreams that make us a village. Thank you so much for this lovely honor. I appreciate it.